Right now, we're going to welcome Blythe Brumley to talk a little bit about the trending changes in searches. Blythe, thank you for joining us today. And I love this one. Gen Z is not using Google search. So you've got to adapt your SEO strategy to what the people want, right? Yes. So you can make it the argument. First of all, th thanks for having me. Good to see you guys. Uh, and, and with SEO, with respect to SEO, it has been evolving for the past several years. And un unintentionally, a senior VP was at a conference recently and revealed some internal data that, that Google had not shared publicly in, in any kind of study or report, but said close to 40% of Gen Z is using Instagram and TikTok for search instead of using the Google Google search and Google Maps. So you could make an argument that a lot of these search results are, are kind of questionable as of late. That's due to spamming. That's due to, you know, people gamifying the system, especially marketers who are just learning the exact format of a blog post that Google loves to have. And that's really your easiest way to get to the top of the rankings. And when I say the top of the rankings, you want to be on, on page one of those search results. You don't want to be in the graveyard that is two, three, and whatever other pages that people might be searching for. For, but the, the results on those pages tend to uh, convert a lot less. But it's really, I think, alarming that TikTok is not only scaring the bejesus out of companies like Facebook and Instagram, but also Google as well, because that's where people are going to make different kinds of searches to get more of an inspirational search, um, get real photos of, of real food, of, of real places that they want to visit, and real videos. And they get that through Instagram and TikTok. And that also also leaves Google uh, up into the to make the decision of what they want to do as far as what results that they display on their search results page because that's evolved over the years as well. So this is going to be kind of a two part question for me. And for, first thing, starting out anecdotally, I definitely relate to this. Like if I'm looking for something like brunch spots in Austin, right? I will go to my Instagram first to search on Instagram, like put Austin in and then do like Austin brunch. And then it pulls up the aesthetic photos. And then you find most of these restaurants have their own Instagram account now, which link to their website in their bio where they have pictures of their menu, et cetera, et cetera, which is a lot less work than going to Google and weeding through all of my options that way. But then also, it kind of gives this, as you mentioned, that firsthand perspective of showing, you know, this is a great photo, this is a good place, this is something cool that's that way. Do we get to a point where do you think that Google now really gets scared of this and starts not optimizing when you search there, like, not, you know, it'll pop up like a, a link to TikTok or a link to something's Instagram first? Do we get to a point where Google stops prioritizing those social media things in their first uh, search results because of this? It's actually the reverse. So Google is, for now, it's the reverse, where Google is is making the announcements where they're going to start including, they, they've included YouTube results for, for years. A lot of people don't know that YouTube is the second largest search engine on the planet. It's more than Yahoo. I mean, whoever uses Yahoo and, and some people use Bing as far as their search engines are concerned. But Google owns close to, I think, 80% of the search market. And the way that they result, the way that they show the results on the results page is that they have their paid advertisements that show first. And then they typically will have one result results and then the rest are videos, there are images, and then you go into the text-based results. So a, a smart marketer would, would optimize for all three of those different areas. But you're right, the, the, the user behavior has changed so much that Google now is kind of forced to include not only YouTube videos, but they've said that they're going to start including TikTok search videos. And TikTok has also said that as a platform themselves, that they're going to increase their search capabilities in order to sort of chip away at that dominant market share that, that Google has on search. They've also said with, with Google in particular, that they're going to start incorporating their shorts feature, which is as a, a very similar feature to TikTok. It's grown in, in popularity as far as the, the YouTube app is concerned. So my thinking is, is that they're going to include the TikTok results for now, so maybe some YouTube shorts because people just aren't the, the the amount of videos just aren't there yet on YouTube Shorts. So I think they're going to supplement that result with YouTube Shorts and TikTok, but there's going to be a day eventually that they're just going to cut TikTok out of it. I think they're only using TikTok right now because they just don't have the, the amount of content that people are looking for. And so they'd, they'd rather, you know, sort of join the party at first, but they're definitely going to make their own party here soon. I feel so old. You're talking about searching for brunch spots on Instagram. I'm over here still using Yelp for different ratings and rankings. But Blythe, when we're looking at really TikTok being so prevalent here and searches, 
are they locking people into their ecosystem? So I know, for example, um, if I clicked on an Instagram link that someone sent me, sometimes I have to just log into my Instagram account. Is that the same case for TikTok? Do I have to download the app? Because I still don't have it. And does that mean I'm missing out on a bunch of content or can I just view it from like a regular old school web browser? Uh, you technically can because the desktop app is is being I, it, 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 there's a lot of desktop apps now for all of the social media platforms because people realize or these people at these companies realize that marketers are going to schedule more content and creators are going to schedule more content if you give them desktop capabilities. Now, from the user standpoint, um, I just download the app. It's, it's a super fun app. That's, that would be my reply to that, because if you want to view TikTok content, if you want to search through their platform, I don't think that that's actually a good question. I don't know that you can search through their platform and not get results or, or get the results that you're trying to see if you don't actually have the app. But I do know that there are instances where we have, you know, a group chat. And so one of us will send a TikTok video and one person in particular in our group chat is just a super privacy nut. He won't even click on the links because he doesn't <laughs> want the web browser to track his data. So he's super crazy about that aspect of it. I'm like, bro, we're just looking for, for beach spots. It's not that big of a deal if the government tracks access in that regard um so you really i would say download the app and try it out or try it out from desktop to see if you can find some different you know uh, i guess search functions that would matter to you because because that the search function or the search intent i should say is really what matters here whether it's tiktok whether it's instagram whether it's pinterest whether it's youtube whether it's it's google the intent matters of why you're going to that platform and so that that's really where the big scare is coming from especially on google's part is that people are going to TikTok and Instagram to look for food spots, to, to look for brunch spots. And that chips away at their ad revenue of where they can place ads on the map feature. Snapchat, I think, just announced the other day that they have their own map or they've had their own map for years, but now Instagram has stolen that feature from them as well. Not really stolen, but copied it from them. So I wouldn't put it past TikTok to eventually make a map feature that incorporates all of these different spots. And that's an additional ad revenue stream. So Google is tend to be more on the navigational side, how to get somewhere, but increasingly, they're, they're still the, the dominant player on the block with 87% of the market share, but increasingly all of these other platforms are starting to chip away because it's useful information. It's information that people want to see. It's more visual, it's more immersive, more, um, it, it, the, you, you actually feel like you're experiencing what you want to experience. You're getting a preview of what you want to experience on these more visual based apps. And I think that that's, that's really Really where Google is going to have to lean more towards when it comes to search. But if you're looking for, for TikTok content, you have to have the app to do the searches. Anthony, download the app. <laughs> Anthony, I, I'll walk you through the step-by-step -step process after the show. We'll set you up with an account. Perfect. It's You're going to be at Economy Lately with Anthony Smith. You're going to go viral. It's, oh, it's fine. It's great. We'll get it done. Economy Lately? <laughs> I like the way you're thinking here. Economy Late Night with Anthony Smith. That's what we're going to do. It. But Blythe, so last question for you you today when we're talking about the crossover between google to these social media sites i think a lot of us kind of have the fear that like oh we're being watched or our data is being tracked which is of course happening right because you google something and then a facebook ad for it pops up or you google one thing and then your for you page is only about things that are relevant to what you googled is there a point right now where these two co or companies google versus the other social media companies are now sharing that data information in a partnership and that's truly influencing what you're seeing on the social sites and is that either helpful or not useful to Google in their fight against the social media? So it's kind of two pronged. So there's been this uh, sort of data, I guess, privacy renaissance that's happened over the last couple of years where people are mo much more aware of their privacy rights. You know, uh, different laws ha have come down the pipeline, especially over in Europe with GDPR. Um, here over in the States, there's the, the California Privacy Act, I believe Colorado and Utah. I think New York is another state that's looking at their own sort of statewide privacy acts that, it, that affects all of these different technology companies. And so what's happening is that a lot of these companies are having to completely rewrite how they collect data in the first place. Now, before there were all these different, you know, sort of third party data brokers where your data is just kind of just up for anybody to, to grab and, and, and you are just bought and sold on, on the digital market as far as your data is concerned. Now they're starting to, to reel that back in, not fast enough, um, but some of these places share data. Some of them go to third party data brokers in order to get the information from there. It's like buying an email list off of, you know, a shady website or 
or something. It's it's essentially works exactly like that. Now, some of these platforms now have their own silos. And so Google search is a great example of, of that is essentially a silo where Google keeps all of the queries that are inputted into their platform. Most of them are kept close to the chest. They're not shared with other third parties. So keyword searching tools and things like that, that is an estimate. It's not based on actual real data that comes from Google itself. Now with all these other platforms that are starting to play and dabble into search, now they're starting to collect their own data. Um, TikTok in particular, Facebook has had years and years of data, um, but they're all going to face the sort of, I guess, the, the, the privacy piper whenever it comes to, to sync for them, because that is where a lot of different marketing strategies are going to fall to the wayside because people have been so used to just having access to a plethora of data where you can just essentially make any kind of target market seg segment, anything you want, and you can advertise towards that segment, you know, a 50 year old grandmother who likes to sew, um, but goes to the YMCA on the weekend, you could target that a few years ago. Nowadays, you can't really do that. So it puts the onus back on the marketer back on the sales team back on the, the on the company itself, in order to create a marketing program that is is not really reliant on a ton of privacy data or privacy related data. And it also increases the importance of collecting your own data, either through your website or your own social media platforms, because that's really the only way that you're going to be able to survive in this future sort of privacy driven marketing world because a lot of these companies either they have access to the data that was sold by third party brokers for years and years but now collecting your own first party data is is really the most important thing that you could be doing as a business owner as a marketer boy this has been truly insightful bringing a lot of knowledge to my <laughs> forefront that i had no idea was we're really getting you on tiktok like that's that's, that's the bottom amazing. we're getting you on <laughs> i think so much for joining us this morning <laughs> I'm scared about falling into guys. the rabbit hole. You're, you're going to get in the rabbit hole and you're going to learn all these things. And then you're going to come up to me and you're be like, Kaylee, look at this recipe. I <laughs> Kaylee, let's go hiking at this spot. Kaylee, let's go have brunch here. And we're like, Anthony, you got you hooked. Oh my God. All right. We're going to head over to the Sydney, to Sydney Edwards for our next look at headlines.